In this video, I want to cover a very simple concept in trading, namely the barrier concept. Um, what a barrier really does is that it usually waits for multiple threads to wait for that object, to wait for that barrier object until it lets multiple threads pass that. The idea of a barrier is as follows. Suppose these arrows are just some threads, just our two threads, and we have here a barrier object. So it's literally just a barrier that is gonna stop the execution of the threads until there are enough threads waiting at that barrier. So if I say that this barrier needs to have three threads waiting, uh, these two threads, once they call the the wait function on that barrier, they're just gonna stop. They're just gonna stop right there because they are not enough. We only have two here and we need three. Once a, a third uh, thread comes along and uh, waits at that barrier, the barrier is gonna be lifted, right? The barrier is gonna be lifted and all the threads are able to continue their execution past that point. So we're gonna take a look at a simple example here. I have created some code for uh, simply creating two threads that we then join. And what I want is to create a barrier. So how do we actually create this barrier object? Well, first things first, like any other uh, object in the pthread API, you have to define here a barrier underscore T, and this is gonna be our barrier. And we have to initialize it, like basically any other object. We have to give it the reference to the barrier, then it's a set of attributes which we're not gonna get into those. Uh, we're gonna just pass null here, but know that you can customize it somewhat uh, using this second argument that you can pass to it, but I'm gonna just pass null, telling it that I want just the default plain old barrier, nothing, nothing fancy. And then there's a third argument to this object, not unlike uh, the mutex and the condition variable where we only have two, uh, the third one is really this count that we had in uh, in here. This three that we have in here, we pass in as the third uh, parameter, just like so. And similarly, we have to destroy the barrier once we're done with it. And then it's calling here destroy, and this guy just takes in the barrier itself. That's all there is to creating the barrier. Now, to wait at the barrier, what we have to do here, this routine is linked to our Peter create. So we can use this and we can say, first things first, we can say printf waiting at the barrier. And so we get a message knowing what's up. And then we can call the pthread barrier wait. And this is exactly the point where all the threads are gonna be waiting on. So uh, here we have two threads, as you might notice, that we create, and we're creating a barrier of free for free threads. Okay, so in this case, after the the pthread barrier wait call has returned, that means that three threads uh, have been able to wait at that barrier and now are executing at the same time, All right? So what we're gonna do here is say print f. Uh, let's say we passed the barrier. Now, hold on, this is kind of weird, right? We have two threads here and the barrier of three. How is that gonna even do anything? Because if we launch this, you will actually notice that the program never finishes execution. It just waits and waits and waits for a thread, for a third thread that never comes along, right? So in this case, it will never finish its execution because this, both threads have called this function, right? And only two threads have called that function actually. And because of that, well, since two is less than three, they are still gonna wait, okay? Now, if we terminate the program and we change it so that we have three threads instead and we launch this, you will notice that now three threads are waiting at the barrier and right after that, they all pass that barrier at the same time, right? So there's not gonna be intermingled messages of these two, there's gonna be always three of these, so three of these, and only then there's gonna be three of these past barrier messages. And you can do this for as many threads as you want. So for example, if I have um, a multiple of 
3. For example, if I have here 9, I'm going to change these to 0 to 9. Well, I should get 3 times the amount of messages we got before. As you can see here, we got waiting at the barrier, we passed the barrier, and then another 3 threads came along and waited, and then another 3, and so on and so forth. Of course, if you have uh, 10 threads waiting at that barrier, at that point, it's not going to be great because the program is never going to finish execution because, well, nine of the threads passed the barrier, as you might uh, count from here, and the tenth one did not actually pass the barrier. Uh, one thing to note here, uh, the printf messages might be intermingled. That's simply because of uh, how they got access to the lock inside the printf here. That's not really... Uh, to do with what actually happened where we had uh, them wait free at a time at the barrier. So that's, that's still working perfectly. Now, the nice thing about it is that a thread can wait multiple times at that same barrier. So right now we're having just each thread wait and then print a message and terminate, right? So we're gonna have to always have that um, that multiple of three number of threads, but this is not really the way you should use barriers, right? Um, maybe we should have here a for loop or a while loop, right? A while of one, let's say, and where each one of them waits, and we can also like sleep for one second so that they don't um, execute too fast, you know? And to not have too many issues, what we can also do is have, instead of just three, we can have, let's say, seven at the same time. So that means that seven of the threads have to come along and actually uh, wait at that barrier, and then only then all those seven threads are gonna continue execution. And then another seven have to come along and so on and so forth. And I'm gonna also add here another uh, sleep for one second, um, simply because I don't want them to print this message and then write next after to print this message. Then it's gonna become a mess. Okay, so every time it prints something on the screen, think about it as a sort of operation that it does. And the same thing here. Okay, so now if I try to launch this with seven, you will notice that on the screen, I will always get a, a set of seven that have passed the barrier at the same time. No more, no less. And this is gonna continue forever because it, every single one is on a while one loop. So this is a nice way to control the execution flow of multiple threads, right? If you want at some point to have multiple threads execute together, this is the way to do it. You just create a barrier, you set a uh, limit to it, which could be really all your threads if you want to. So here we can set it to 10 and maybe even remove the while loop. And then you will see that only once all those 10 have waited at the barrier, then we actually print anything on the screen. That was a short introduction to barriers. I hope you got something out of it. If you do have any questions, leave them down in comments below or on our Discord server. Of course, the source code is going to be available on our website uh, at the link below. Take care.